Hola YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. Welcome to the third episode of Out of the Box, a speed skating talk show, we can say. And today, today we're going to have some four, maybe even five big Italian names in speed skating. So maybe we want to start presenting themselves. Who are these skaters? Well, we go. We are going to have one top short distance speed skater from speed skater from Italy. We are going to have one long distance top speed skater from Italy, and also the person in charge of the physical preparation of the Ital the Italian team, and also one of the coaches of the Italian team. Now, you might have some. You might see that. This is the first episode that we are going full on English. Please bear in mind that my main language is Portuguese. The main language of the people in this show today, it's Italian. So if there's some mistakes, well, bear with us. Let's go for this. <laughs> okay, so we got Georgia, we got Niero. Hi. Who else? Hello, who else do we have here? We got Hello, Michelle nice and... <laughs> How are you guys doing? Fine. Awesome. Fine, fine. Very good. <laughs> so I'm going to say, I just said who, I, I, I was just telling the people watching the show that we are going to have a short distance speed skater, a long distance speed skater, a coach and a physical preparation um, person, but physical preparation coach. But let me tell them who you really are. But no better way to introduce you guys than you. So, Georgia, do you want to tell a little bit more about you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm a, a speed skater and a, a student from Italy. And uh, I'm a short distance. And um, uh, I skate from when I, since I was, uh, I think, seven or six years old. And uh, I'm in national team uh, since I was uh, 40, I think, and uh, nothing. Mm, I'm, I'm this. <laughs> okay, tell me something. Why speed skating? You started, you started skating at seven, right? Did yeah. you start speed skating at seven or you started skating in general at seven? Uh, speed skating. I started um, speed skating, yes, because uh, there was my friend uh, when we was a child that um, and we we played together, and um, uh, she she skater and so we I try this sport because uh, when in uh, at seven years old I do only swim and. Uh, <laughs> I don't like a lot, so my mom uh, bring me to a lesson, the first lesson, and uh, so I never stop to to skate. That is awesome, and being in a Ita in a country like Italy, where you guys have so much history in skating, it must yes. be exciting. It must be exciting to to join the Italian team seven years later, like you said, if you started at fourteen. Yes. But what's also interesting is that you keep on that team. For how long have you been on that team then? Uh, I, I don't understand. <laughs> Sorry, what I'm trying to say is that, imagine, you told me yes. that you, you joined the Italian team when you were 14. Yes. So I'm, I'm asking you, for how long have you mm. been in the Italian team? This is a... <laughs> A pretty way to ask how old you are without mm. saying. <laughs> ah, okay, it's okay. Uh, I, uh, I now I twenty two, and so it's a lot of fear. And uh, but uh, I think that the emotion and the feeling uh, is always the same when uh, you see the um, the list of the the people that. Uh, Go to the world championship uh, is uh, always uh, always an emotion. Is in this group uh, and uh, put the skate on uh, and uh, go on the track uh, with uh, the sweets uh, of Italy. Yeah, I can only imagine because mm. 
from the time that I used to race, sometimes against the team Italy. I, I, I always saw Italy from far <laughs> behind, so... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nero, you want to tell, tell everyone a little bit more about you? For how, lo how old are you? For how long have you been skating? For how long did you join Team Italy? And w in what type of skating are you specialized? Okay, I think something happened with Nero. Maybe he got too excited. Maybe he got too excited. <laughs> so I need to go to someone <laughs> who is even more excited. Michelle, I'm going to have to, like, to the people at home, I, I never met you before, but it's amazing how happy, how positive you are. If you are transmitting that to the people that you are training, I can only now understand why the Italian skaters are so good. You want to tell us a little bit more about yourself? About myself now, I'm, I wasn't, uh, I was not a skater. Um, when I was younger, eh, a lot of years ago, um, a lot of years ago, I was uh, an athlete of modern pentathlon. Um, swimming, riding, shooting, running, and fencing. And then uh, sports uh, um, will be also my life, my job, my joke. Because uh, is, I, I think uh, that uh, uh, when, uh, when we work with the athletes, with the high-level athletes, with the young uh, people with a child, we must uh, to to give her to give them uh, emotions, and uh, and so I I hope uh, that uh, when I work uh, not with but for an athlete, I can uh, transmit uh, my emotion, and I want to help him or help her to have a performance, have a goal. I can only imagine that being an athlete that trains with you will be exciting. And the reason why I say that is not all the skaters, not all the athletes like that part of training because physical preparation, it's not easy. So going to train and having someone that it's positive, it's for sure super important. So we will, going, we will be going a little bit more in depth during the show, but that is awesome. From what I've known from you <laughs> awesome <laughs> now let's let, let's go let's go to luca luca yeah. you want to tell the people at home who you are what is your function in the italian yes of course. Skating team? now i am uh, one of the coaches of the italian uh, speed skating team uh, i start work with the uh, with the federation many years ago maybe in uh, 2004 in the summer camps with the child and then I grow up uh, as a coach and start uh, work with the national team in uh, 2013 with the cadets uh, in, in regional meetings, uh, national meetings. Uh, and then I, 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 I have um, such a, a a uh, regular grow, grow up as a coach in the in the national uh, in the national team and now uh, uh, it, it was the third uh, world championship in uh, 2019 that we i, I was uh, with the with the team and is uh, uh, georgia said that that is always the same uh, emotion and is the same for me as a coach because uh, when I see the the blue shirt, the, our uh, course, I, I always have uh, uh, an inside emotion, a really, really great emotion. So I try to do my best always every day, every minute of the meetings and competition to make the athletes in the, the best way to do to give their their best in the in the in the race. So awesome. this is me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, can, I, I can tell something uh, about uh, this, uh, this uh, mind of, of Luca. Uh, then uh, uh, there's a, a big difference. Uh, uh, when, when we are uh, athletes, uh, we can have uh, adrenaline, but uh, uh, when uh, there's the start uh, and uh, the race, uh, adrenaline uh, go on, go up uh, for the performance. When we are uh, in the other side, uh, uh, coaches uh, or, uh, or uh, physical preparation, 
preparation uh, is not the same because uh, adrenaline uh, stay inside of us uh, and it's very very difficult uh, the only way is to scream with uh, the performance of our athletes <laughs> i can only imagine about that and let me tell you the two of you we're going to need to talk a bit about some of the stuff that you guys are doing because there's a lot of stuff that i'm interested about yeah. from the results that you guys have been achieving from the the techniques that you teach to the rest of the world we're going to go a little bit more in depth into that during the next the next couple of minutes but first niero <laughs> now that you're there is he, is, is he there or he just disappeared again he's scared he's scared of me i think he's really scared of me <laughs> no but it's not a problem here's what we're gonna do we have a, we have a live chat i'm gonna start speaking with all of you guys but before that for everyone who's on the live chat i started a shop this week and two weeks ago and i got a shirt for one of the questions that we have on the live chat it doesn't matter where they are in the world they can be whatever they want. Make us a question. We're going to try to answer as many questions as we can through the show today. And randomly, in the next couple of days, we will choose one of the winners of the shirt, one of the persons to win the shirt. And then on the next show, which is in two weeks from now, we will announce it. And now let's see. Niero, are you not scared of me anymore? <laughs> oh, sorry. I have a really big problem with my Wi-Fi and my computer. So that's, that's why uh, something happened and then... I have to move to uh, with my iPhone now, so I hope uh, yeah, you see me good, maybe. We see you good. The problem is that you might be too fast, so you're just going faster than <laughs> us. <laughs> okay, Niero, uh, the question that I made to everyone, can you just introduce yourself? Basically, for how long have you been skating? Uh, from what part of Italy are you? For how long did you join the Italian team? And as an example, what's your... What do you think was your best result, in your opinion? Uh, start with the easy part. So my name is uh, <laughs> my name is Daniel, and uh, I think I've been speed skater since I was uh, four years old. Four, five years old, I start to 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 move on uh, on skate, and uh, and now I have, I'm 23 years old. So it's been uh, it's been a long time. And uh, I, w um, I was living really close to the uh, to the track. To the I live in uh, Scaltenigo near Venice, and uh, Scaltenigo is is a bit famous in Italy for uh, uh, speed skating. Uh, also in the in the past years, a, a lot of uh, like Massi and Luca and uh, Sazzorato and all these guys, uh, they were coming here to train to do the to, to do the test with the national team. So I was going. I was going to to see what they were doing, and uh, and so th then my first. Uh, uh, I think I start to be in the national team uh, since I was cadet. Um, I think before I was not. Uh, I was not really good. I was uh, shorter than now, so even shorter, and I was uh, taking a lot of punch in the in the group. <laughs> so uh, I was not uh, good enough. And then um, when I was cadet, I start to uh, to move into the national team, um, and then uh, uh, and then I I never left uh, the Italian team from when I was cadet. I think almost every year. I think only one year I was not uh, in the national team, but for all all the other years I was inside. So, so since I was cadet, I think I was thirteen or fourteen years old, and. Uh, I think my best result uh, at the moment is uh, in 2018 uh, when I took the the two silver uh, medal at the World Championship in Earth. Uh, I think I was really close uh, uh, many times that championship, but it was not enough to win the the gold medal. So. <laughs> I'm sorry the expression, but that must suck. <laughs> that must be hard yeah. to be so close. <laughs> one time, one time is fine, but two times. Mm, yes, I, I can only uh, imagine. Complaining too much. But you know what? What we always say: it's the third time. Third, third time is the charm. So next time, there won't be a next time. 
Now, <laughs> this, this one goes to the athletes. Do you, this one goes to the athletes, and then I'm going to change the question. I'm going to twist it a little bit for the coaches. But how is it to carry such a strong flag to use that blue suit? Because I'm going to be honest with you guys. I know that over the past few years, the results might not be the same like they were in the late 90s or even the early 2000s. And we will get there why this is happening or why this happened. I will want to hear about, like, from the coaches what they think about it. But how is the pressure? Do you guys feel any pressure? Is it a lot? Is, this one goes to Daniel and to Georgia. Georgia can start. Um, the pressure to put on the the blue the blue T-shirt is uh, it's high. But uh, it's not uh, really pressure. It's uh, it's uh, an amazing feeling because uh, you think that uh, all the people in Italian uh, look at you, and uh, there there are not uh, different um, different team. We are all together, and they are together for you. For example, after or before a race, uh, you received uh, a lot of message. From uh, from everything, uh, from everyone that uh, say good luck or a good race or uh, don't worry, uh, the next uh, the next one will be good, uh, and uh, it's a uh, it's amazing feeling because uh, you uh, you are not alone and you you feel it. Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome, Daniel. Do you feel the same way or? Uh for me it's quite the same i don't feel a uh, uh pressure in that way i mean when i go inside the track uh, for sure i have pressure but the the big pressure comes from myself because i i want to achieve that so uh, yeah i'm the biggest problem i don't care about what the other things or uh, stuff like that uh, i'm more focused on myself and uh, so yeah, I know we are a big country of uh, inline skater, but if you if you focus on the past and if you if you watch uh, what they did uh, in the past, then you I think you're never gonna be happy about your results. Or uh, and then I think also that in the in the in these years uh, inline uh, uh, changed a lot. The races are different. Uh, the speed is different. Uh, a lot of other things. Are I think are uh, difficult than uh, than in the past. Th this is what I think. So I think you cannot really compare about uh, uh, the national team of today and the national team of the ten years ago. Because I I heard because I was not uh, I was not uh, really there. But like 15 years ago, uh, Colombia was nobody, and now Colombia is a uh, one of the best, oh, I think, the best country, <clears throat> the best country that uh, when we go racing at World Championship. So you cannot yeah. really compare too much uh, the the two national team. And uh, the, the the one thing I like it uh, at the moment is that uh, we have a younger national team. So that's also a good a good sign. And uh, uh, also, if we are younger, we we take results at the uh, the top. Uh, and I think I think you said it all. I think you and Georgia, what you guys said about how proud you guys feel over anything else and the support that you feel from your country, those are the most important things because the pressure, I don't know, I was never part of, of the blue team. <laughs> I don't even speak your language, but I can only imagine that you having your closest friends and probably even the people that race against you on the national championship supporting what you do because they're representing their country must only be a ma an amazing feeling. Uh, now, redirecting these to the coach and somehow getting something, uh, trying to use something that Daniel just said. He was actually talking about the Colombian uh, speed skating team. We will get there too. But I have to say that we all know, the rest of the world knows, that you guys have been one of the main reasons why speed skating is what it is. The 
what you what you teach the what you teach to the rest of the world made speed skating be what it is. What is your opinion about this, Luca? What do you think? It is, how do you feel about Italy at the moment? How do you feel to be as a, an Italian, the, one of the Italian speed skating coaches at the moment? Do you feel pressure yourself because of what happened in the past too? Or how do you feel about it? Yes, of course. I feel pressure every, every time we, we are on a meeting or on the race. The pressure is a part of sports uh races so uh, we we can't uh, we we can't do anything without pressure but um maybe the most important thing uh in the uh, actual reality in italy is that uh, uh massimiliano make uh, a great work to 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 create a, a team of of um, of friends uh, um, so um, the, mo the 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 one, one thing is passion and the other thing is um, uh, in italian we say uh, affiatamento so um, uh, i don't know in english how to say it um, the, to make a team um, with harmony with, with harmony with harmony yes Yes, harmony is yes. maybe uh, okay. So uh, and another thing that uh, Massimiliano ever <laughs> said every time that is that um, in every situation uh, we can do it. You repeat this this phrase uh, every time you can. <laughs> so <laughs> we we trust in in this and and try to. To fight the the Colombian uh, <laughs> supremacy, uh, I think the, okay. these are the the, the the things that are important for for the actual situation of, of the national team. Uh, he we try to do a great work during the year to to stay with the guys because uh, uh, the guys um, grow up with with their trainer, uh, but. We 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 try to to be present in their uh, in their uh, the their growth growth, the grow up yeah. yes okay <laughs> Michel yes how is it for you do you do you work with other sports too like with any speed skating team from other sport or just with the not just or you focus mainly on the speed skating national team yes. Um... I live in pressure. <laughs> I live in pressure and uh, speed skating is uh, a beautiful pressure. Um, I, I, I think that uh, uh, to, be, to be a physical trainer uh, mm, is difficult. It's difficult because uh, I'm not, uh, um, for Italian speed skating team, I'm not the trainer. I'm a trainer, but not uh, of uh, Italian national speed skating team. There is Luca, <laughs> but uh, mm, it's important to to do to the athlete, to the trainer, the um, the force, the strength, the capacity to to feel the goal, to feel the performance, to feel the strength, and uh, it's a. Uh, um, a very difficult uh, moment because uh, uh, athletes give to me uh, their life, their body, their mind, their emotions. And uh, so I must work uh, eh, for the athletes. I must work with the trainer to, to do to the athlete the best way, the best condition to have uh, performance. This year, uh, one of my athletes have, has uh, 
has um, won, won uh, the um, European Championship uh, in uh, 100 meters, uh, my athlete Linda Rossi. And uh, for me, it's a, a very big emotion because uh, I, I have worked with her uh, in all uh, the stage uh, to have performance. And so it's uh, um, a very beautiful emotion. I can only imagine. I can only imagine, but now my next question was not going to be this one. But I'm going to use exactly what you said, and I'm going to make another question for you and to Luca, which is, with the whole situation that the world is facing, with the whole pandemic, how are you guys fighting against these as a speed skating pre uh, preparation coach and as a speed skate national coach? How are you guys dealing with this? How is, I'm going to go straight to Michelle. How are you preparing your athletes without knowing if there's even going to be a world championship or not we have uh, <clears throat> we don't know we don't know um, the, the the next competitions we, we there's there's not a, a, a date surely for competition because uh, uh, the the world is uh, um, is in, in pause in a pandemic <laughs> moment yes and so it's in pause <laughs> yes but uh, but uh, we must work and uh, we must uh, uh, be with the athletes because uh, the athletes believe uh, in uh, our uh, person. And so uh, in uh, this uh, three month uh, um, with Luca, with Massi Presti and with the other Italian coaches, uh, uh, we have done uh, <coughs> several um, training, uh, home training uh, um, session. To, to help the athlete to have a condition to to help the athlete to have a group okay uh, not uh, they are not alone they are with us uh, I can tell to my athlete okay I am with you don't worry okay okay it makes sense what you're telling me but now going a bit more specific and I'm sorry to ask you about this maybe you don't want to no, don't don't want to answer but how can you prepare your athletes, like specifically, how can you be preparing your athletes without having a date? I, like, usually you have to do a certain type of training because you yeah. know that in one month, two months, three months, there's going to be a world championship and you, you prepare your athletes accordingly. What are you doing at the moment without having a date? <clears throat> at the moment, uh, we, I, am, uh, give, uh, I give to my athletes uh, a general uh, stimuli. Uh, not specific, not only uh, specific force, not only specific strength, uh, not uh, only um, power training, because uh, I don't know where they can have some competitions. Okay. And so for me, it's very important to uh, train with, uh, with them um, in all, all the... the I don't know the English name, La Sfera, the round one, the ball, on, uh, uh, to, to, to have, uh, to, to be athlete. Uh, an athlete uh, is uh, not only uh, skate and uh, endurance, uh, but uh, it's uh, many other things, uh, many other um, emotions. And so I must to give uh, uh, them the, um, the possibility to, to have a, a training conditioning that uh, can take to the athlete uh, to the top, but uh, without uh, um, injuries, okay? okay. Because uh, it's uh, very important to preserve the athlete uh, from injuries in this uh, period. Okay, so basically you are telling yeah. me that you are keeping them as prepared as possible to at any moment, you can just push the trigger. Okay, and they, okay, and it's go. correct. How long? How long would you need in advance to be able to push the trigger? Imagine. Uh -huh. <laughs> Beautiful question. <laughs> how long do you need? Like how many months? How many weeks do you need? Like if yes. the world championship now, is going uh, to be okay, in okay. three months, uh, is it enough? Beautiful questions. Uh, thank you so much because uh, uh, we don't we don't forget uh, that uh, when uh, I work uh, with the national team, uh, I work with the top of the athletes in my um, nation and so then the athletes are very um, 
are uh, looks like uh, the cats okay uh, <laughs> and so it's uh, uh, for us uh, um, who train uh, who work with the, this kind of athletes uh, we can uh, think uh, to um, four six weeks if if the athlete has worked in the best way with the um, physical preparation uh, of basic strength of basic force because uh, the um, conversion i don't know if it's if conversion or is the right the, the, um, the correct in english but uh, in italia si dice a eh, conversione della forza that's a uh, eh, from basic oh. to specific and uh, it's possible to do this uh, with this kind of athletes in uh, uh, four six uh, maybe eight weeks not more but uh, we we must start uh, from a basic uh, the top of the basic condition yeah basically you are keeping the the athletes ready at any moment yes they can yes. shoot into yes, the world championships because the athletes um, uh, are able yes to have performance not when it's possible but when it's correct to have the top of the performance okay uh, this is a, 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 a critical a, point yes okay oh, okay thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> luca Yes. And what about you? How are you preparing your athletes from your side of things? Because you, not just the, the, the preparation, the physical preparation of the athletes, but everything else, the, the physical state of your athletes, the, the technique and everything. How are you working together with your athletes? Yes. The, the thing is, uh, is such the same as uh, said uh, Michele, because we have to to take our athletes in the in a in a condition that uh, is um, is like a, a line uh, that growing up really slowly in, in at this moment because we we can push okay but uh, this line permit the, to the athlete to the coaches to push and in four six weeks they are ready for a competition uh another important thing thing is uh, motivation because uh, this pandemic period was uh, really 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 uh, dangerous for the motivation but uh, uh, fortunately they, they are a top level athlete and um, they are also if uh, in line speed skating is not a professional uh, sport but they are a professional athlete, so they know how to to keep in, in focus uh, to the to the uh, target. Okay, so we we try to help them to to maintain the, this uh, this focus always high because uh, this is the the engine of their. Uh, uh, Yes. Life, uh, sport life. Okay. Yeah, fully yes. understand what you mean. Basically, if they're not mo if they're not motivated, if the if the moral is not there, if they're not motivated, nothing else will, nothing else will work. They yes, will have right. the best coaches, the best physical preparator, the best sponsors, the best products. But here is more important than anything, and that's yes. why I wanted to make you that question. Now I'm going to direct the question to to Daniel. Daniel. What have you been doing during this pandemic? How have you been training? How have you been keeping yourself motivated without knowing when it's going to be the next competition? Can you hear me, Daniel? I hear you really well. I'm trying to uh, get on. Uh... Mm, I think we're having... My Wi-Fi sucks a lot. Uh, <laughs> Daniel live in a bunker. You try to repeat. Uh... I think we're having some problems here a little bit. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to redirect the question to Georgia. Um, um, 
So That's during the, the pandemic, the most difficult uh, thing, uh, as uh, said uh, Michele and Luca, is uh, to have a good motivated because uh, we, for the moment, uh, we don't have uh, uh, the focus because we don't know when uh, when we go to to do a competition and to race, and so it's difficult to prepare something for uh, for what the. A lot of time I, I ask to myself uh, why I, I continue to, to training every day with bike or, uh, or with technique. And, uh, but uh, I think that uh, in this period I discovered, I rediscovered where, uh, why I skating. Because uh, if uh, during the day I don't have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things uh, to do and uh, any anyone to see, but uh, uh, I have uh, these uh, three hours uh, to training at my home and uh, and uh, the the um, I have the um, the mind free and uh, I think uh, this is one of the most uh, grateful thing that uh, I have learned uh, to the pandemic, yes. I think I it's, a, it's a difficult moment, but I learn a lot. I learn because uh, I, I learned to, to training alone and not uh, with, uh, with a group. What you just said, it to me, as someone who skated, I, I was part of the Portuguese team, never at your level. I, I used to be a professional skating in the streets. Too. And nowadays, what I do has nothing to do with that, even if I still live from skating. But I could fully understand what you were saying. And I actually say the same to everyone, which is this pandemic, in my opinion, has actually been very, very good for a lot of people because it makes them realize why they really do it. And sometimes I believe that people at your level, any of you guys, including Daniel, that is not here now because of the Wi Fi problems. It's very easy to start putting like you guys compete in one of the best teams in the world and you have results that you want to achieve. And it's very easy to put that pressure in front of everything. But sometimes we forget the reason. And like Lucas said, being motivated, it's very, very important. If we lose the reason why you start doing it, we lose the roots. If we, a, a tree without roots is nothing. So that's an opinion, obviously, from someone which is not in your place. It's an external opinion. Now, which is an opinion that I want to hear your, your side of it. I don't know if, if Luca is on the team for long enough, but I want to ask Luca, why is the Italian team, I would say team, but not just as a team, even like the clubs. Uh, nowadays, they are closed compared to the other countries as an example i know that there's a lot of countries that send their skaters to to the international competitions without being uh, european championships world championships or the gisingen tournament that you guys usually compete but in general italy is a lot more closed than it used to be and my question is does it have anything to do with you guys in the late no, in the 90s maybe mid early 90s, sharing a lot of what you knew. Because everything that we have nowadays, the techniques, a lot of the coaches and everything, they come from the Italian school. Is it related? Uh, I don't know if I understand very well your question. You want to know if uh, um, we, uh, we share... Let me, let me make it simple. Let me make it more simple. Okay. So, in the early 90s, Yes. The Italian school was the skating school for the rest of the world. Speed skating. I used to be part of the speed skating Portuguese team and we had videos. We we studied that video, those videos. The whole world studied the Italian videos of how to do this, how to do that. The Italian school teach the rest of the world a lot. But maybe they teach them, but maybe you guys teach people too much. Because <laughs> nowadays, it's the truth, nowadays we're talking about Colombia just on top, right? But nowadays you guys seem like you change what you're doing with that. It seems like you guys became a lot closer. Do you see any relation? 
Um, I don't know if there is any, any relation. I I know that we we don't share too much because share is uh, is basically uh, uh, for for growing up for all all together. So uh, share a thing is a, a a thing that make me growing up. Uh, also, you that uh, have a, a thing for from me, but. Um, uh, I think that um, in in those years uh, there was not uh, a leader in the national team. Uh, Massimiliano now is uh, maybe the seventh or eighth year that uh, work uh, uh, consecutively. So um, he, he make a good work because he build. We build a team, a close team, uh, like you said. Um, before him, uh, I don't know exactly because uh, in those years I I worked with with, uh, with little guys with the child uh, and and don't know really what happened. But I, I know that there was not uh, a person that uh, make a work for many years to to build a close team. So the I I think that the the, the secret if if you can if we we can uh, <laughs> said this is the this uh, a great work for for many years and um, trust in guys uh, from uh, thirteen years and uh, make them growing up with the the clubs and national team. This is. Uh, for me, the reason. Okay, that, I, I understand what you mean, and I, I keep saying the same on this video, and I usually say it to everyone, which is I really believe in sharing, growing up, the community. What I usually say is that if there's there's two different ways of growing. If there's a cake, you can try to get the other one's piece of the cake, and then you get more. Or you can try to grow the whole cake and your piece is going to be bigger. So sh I believe in sharing as growing the sport that we do and that we all love. Now I'm going to need to, <laughs> I'm going to need to go back to Daniel. Daniel, uh, I was just questioning you about the pandemic. How have you been training? How have you been dealing with the whole situation? I think Daniel is on silent. Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Okay, what's the question? I'm trying my best, but my, I don't know, it's, you know, my wi is working all day, and for part, I don't know what's, what's going on here. <laughs> it's okay. But, uh, okay, no what's the question? So, we are talking about the pandemic. How have you been going around the pandemic? The training, uh, getting, keeping motivated? What have you been doing during these times? Uh, we're not sorry yeah. what you want to know the the I pandemic hear, I, I don't hear anything when you when you speak <laughs> about pandemic okay. what we did at yes. home what you yes. yes okay so uh for me i think uh, uh it was a uh, training and training and training and eating and uh and the, uh i I train uh, every day, uh, twice a day. I uh, basically basically did uh, uh, jumps and uh, slide board and uh, bike uh, uh, and all, all this kind of stuff uh, at home. And uh, we did also some um, some training with the national team all together, uh, just to. I think it was not about the exercise, uh, but it was just to, to stay together, to to see each other on the screen. And uh, that was something, uh, you know, you don't see anyone uh, uh, except for your parents at home. So it was fun also to, to see the other, what was what they were doing and uh, how they are. So I think we, we was really lucky to have uh, uh, social media and to, to see uh, all the other guys from uh, all, all the world. 
what they what were what they were doing and if they were safe and sound and uh, but yeah basically i train all the quarantine so that's good <laughs> okay so now i'm going to move a little bit to the questions that we have from the people watching these and one of the first questions was from lira to to daniel and the question is daniel what how do, I think he means what, uh, how, but anyway, what does it feel like to be so young but be so good as the older skaters like Bart and Diogo? Yeah, I think it's uh, quite uh, quite special. Uh, it's not easy that uh, you know the the passage from junior uh, to senior. I think it's never easy. Um, and what I what I saw in my in my career is that uh, uh, from junior to senior, I did uh, almost uh, uh, like a really good transition. I, I saw a lot of uh, strong guys from uh, passing from junior to senior, struggling uh, to, to reach uh, the, the senior level. But uh, that was not uh, my case. I think I was, uh, I was really good since my first year in senior. And uh, but this is quite special. I don't know. I, f I felt really good, but I, I also trained really hard to to get that. And uh, when I was junior, I remember uh, I was uh, competing with uh, competing with the senior. Also, if I, I mean, I could skate with junior and. Uh, but I was preferred to skate with the senior to try to, uh, to see uh, what was my. Uh, uh, how do you say my my highest point? My uh, to see yes. uh, where I am uh, in compared to to the senior guy, uh, and that that's also I think uh, a big difference. I think uh, the other junior they were, were like oh no I prefer to race uh, with the junior and to reach like it. Okay. it I prefer to skate uh, with the senior, you know, with with uh, Fabio, uh, and then top ten was also fine i think it was more special than uh, top three uh, junior <laughs> yes so i understand uh, what you're saying in the first episode that we've done of this out of the box we did it with some of the best portuguese speed skaters such as we're doing with you guys with coaches and all that and we had diogo marreiros and diogo's coach uh, professor uh, paulo batista which was also the announcer at the Barcelona World Roller Games. And Paulo was actually saying that a lot of time people, a lot of times people focus on the results when they're younger, but what really matters is to get the results when you get to those like senior or the, like you just said, it's going to always feel better because then no one is going to say uh, he was world champion junior. Because that word, it's kind of like taking the value of what you did. So when someone said you got fifth place in the world championship, then it's like, okay, I was in the top five worldwide. So I believe I understand what you mean by that being so powerful in you. Now, this question was made by uh, Lira, which is Marco Lira. You, I don't know if you guys know, but he's one of probably the yeah. best Portuguese speed skaters. And... I can totally see why Mar why Marco Lira made this question, and I totally see why he made the next question to 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 Georgia, which is Georgia. Uh, how was your way until you achieved the Power Slide Pro Team? Uh, before the Power Slide uh, World Team, uh, I was in the Power Slide Italian uh, team, and uh, I entered in the World Team. Uh, uh, after my last world championship in Nanjing and uh, from this moment uh, I think that uh, something changed because uh, every time that uh, I go with the power slide is uh, is like a family because it's a, a very good team because uh, also during uh, uh, the other race uh, for example, at the World Championship, uh, when, uh, for example, I see Sandrine is um, is something that uh, is is uh, 
have you have a, a friend uh, for example in the i think last year in the world championship in the 500 meters on the road on the one lap on the road uh, i was uh, with her on the quarter of final and uh, she passed it and uh, i i know but um, i'm happy for her because uh, you you spend time together and uh, and uh, you you have uh, share something to learn because uh, there are all top athletes and uh, i have uh, learned uh, a lot from uh, from everyone of uh, in the team i know what you mean about the power slide pro team i worked with power slide for over 10 years including yeah. sometimes with the speed skating team so my question now goes to you about someone that it's not with you on the team. How is it to be on the power slide team without Erica? Because Erica left the power slide yes, team before me. Yeah. Okay. But was it before you? So you were never in the same team with her? Uh, no, in the power slide the world team not because. But uh, I have uh, a good memories with Erica because uh, uh, she um, was. Uh, like social media uh, at the world team in Nanjing, my last uh, world, um, my last uh, world uh, as a junior, and uh, I remember that uh, before the final of uh, 500 meters, I I went uh, from her and I asked. I was uh, very anxious. I was very anxious, and uh, I asked. Uh, uh, how I do the race because I don't have idea. And um, she gave me uh, a lot of uh, good, um, good, um, consigli. Advice, advice. advice. Yes. And, <laughs> yes. And uh, she was the first person that uh, I hug after, uh, after the finish line because I arrived second. And uh, I have also a good, uh, a good photos that uh, she uh, takes. Uh, yes. Now, one question. I'm uh, sorry. This is the, the sucker question. Do you think that she leaving power slide to rollerblade influenced your entrance to power slide world team do you think if she was still on the power slide pro team you would still make your place i'm making this question without knowing them. um no i think no because i don't know that uh, she entered in the rollerblade uh, and uh, because i think uh, she left the power slide before and uh, i i was uh, one year in the power slide and she entered one year after in the okay, uh, okay. okay. <laughs> sorry sorry about no, the no, question no, no. <laughs> okay we got some more questions here and i have one more question from Inês Rodrigues to you mm -hmm. georgia when did you feel that you should decide between being a sprinter like a short distance skater or a long distance athlete uh i decided uh, Mm, I think at the um, at the beginning of my career as an athlete to be a short distance, but in the last times I I try to do a bit uh, bit long distance. I have, uh, for example, last year at the European Championship I do the elimination on road, and uh, I like a lot to, to stay in the group. Uh, for example, for me, it's very important uh, um, to stay in the group uh, and uh, with uh, with uh, the teammates. Um, and the last year, last year, I do the um, I do good race in uh, Geisingen with the Sandrine, and also in the World Championship, uh, uh, the marathon and uh, the um, and the elimination on the European Championship. And uh, but I'm a sprinter. Mm, so okay. I decided at the, at the beginning. I got to bring the coaches here now because <laughs> I, this was one of the questions that I made uh, on the last episode of Out of the Box with the Spanish, with the Spanish team. Uh, I will go to Vasco's question, but before I want to ask something related with what we just said to the coaches, because in theory, the bodies for a, a short distance skater and for a long distance skater is completely different. One should be more about the, the potence, right? Like the, uh, 
what, what would be the word, how explosive they are. And the other one, it's about a different type of strength. The muscles should be different. Does a, look at, does, does a coach or Michelle, does a, does the physical preparator have an influence on how the athletes choose what they're going to do or will you let them, you guys let them choose freely? Look at mm. first no i i don't think that the athlete uh, can choose by himself or or he can choose if he can do it um, there is a uh, nature <laughs> so an athlete is uh, is uh, predisposed or not, i don't know how, yes, how yes, it's, yes, yes. it's okay. born it's born with it. it's Something born it... uh, to to be a sprinter or uh, uh, a long distance athlete or maybe not uh, not uh, even uh, it, it can be an athlete that can be directed so in this case you you can uh, you can try to help him to decide but uh, a sprinter born sprinter um, uh, I I don't think that the, in uh, in light speed skating the the body is uh, is the is um, uh, like a main, in, in, a main. In, yes because uh, we have uh, we have skate so uh, like cycling there is uh, uh, an important to the the weight and the power okay so it, it's not uh, uh, always the a sprinter is a big guy <laughs> so I I, okay. I I try to to explain uh, yes. it's not it's not always this because uh, because uh, we have skate so uh, a sprinter uh, is obviously born sprinter so he has strength ex explosive strength uh but uh not uh not bigger not not for uh, yes uh, let, let me yeah. let me try to to explain this for the people at yes. home just to simplify it in in theory the theory says that yes the section of muscle when the section of muscle is bigger there's more power this is what the theory says but According to what you're saying, because there is an external device, which is the skates, there are a lot more things, such as the technique, such as the... Yes, this is my the, opinion, yes. Yes, the way that they adapt to the skate. How does Michelle see this? Because Michelle is more related with the, the physical preparation and not so much with the technique. So what's your point of view here, Michelle? Yes, uh, <clears throat> I agree with Luca because... Uh, uh, my thought uh, is uh, that uh, speed skating uh, is a complex uh, sport. Uh, um, speed skater uh, not uh, not have only physical but technical. Um, they must use a skate, and so there's uh, some uh, um, coordination skill to prepare to grow to grow up, and uh, it's difficult, but. Uh, uh, we also uh, we, we, we we don't forget uh, we don't never forget uh, that uh, uh, we have uh, um, an important choose uh, that uh, the, the name is uh, um, fiber muscle fiber the muscle fiber are very important uh, to um, The type of skating they're gonna do, the type yes, of because uh, yes, because uh, uh, when uh, when we, we talk about uh, a speed skater, uh, um, there's the possibility that uh, the muscle fiber white or uh, or red and so mm -hmm. um, faster or slow and uh, but, long, but durable in the same uh, in the same way 
uh, in one uh, direction and the other direction because uh, uh, the speed skater um, is uh, um, a wonder athlete. He um, is uh, a, a big skill to, to have a big uh, speed with uh, a short uh, um, section. Uh, and so uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, there's the possibility that uh, um, a speed skater who, uh, who is a, a sprinter is good also for long distance because uh, if uh, uh, coaches and uh, physical preparation is correct, the, the same skater can, uh, um, can have uh, uh, so, some uh, uh, excellent results also in the, in the sprint, but uh, maybe in the, in the distance. Okay, I think uh, this. Okay, it makes sense what you're saying. So basically, the thing is, you are more on the technical, on the theoretical part of it. For you, you know the specification that a speed skater needs, but at the same time, as someone who works with athletes on their performance, you try to get them better at what their body is supposed yes. to be better. Yes, at. for example, we have here Daniel and Georgia. One uh, long distance, the other one uh, a short distance. But uh, I have, uh, when I watch them, uh, when I watch them in competition, I can see that uh, Georgia is very good. Uh, also in long distance and maybe i have never seen now daniel in short distance but uh, but uh, i i can uh, i can believe in him eh? if uh, he he want to try some uh, short distance because uh, the muscle the fiber the coordination is uh, very high level in this mm. athlete they have a top of coordination and uh, the answer of uh, brain, uh, the answer of muscle, the answer of arms, legs, uh, core is uh, is uh, is fast, and so uh, I think that this kind of athlete can do everything. Uh, basically, like like Lucas said, they are so good that it's going to be their technique and that will go above everything else they're just, just like they're such a high level skater like that they can just do it if they really want to specify on that with the help of the right people right coaches right physical preparators that all can happen now i'm going to make a question here from vasco martins i'm i'm not going to make it only to luca basically vasco said luca what was your favorite world championship and why but before i let luca answer that i'm going to Twist the question a little bit, and I'm going to make it for all of you. I'm going to obviously want to know from all of you what was your first, what was your favorite world championship. But I will also want to know your opinions about probably one of the worst world championships, which uh, you know which one I'm referring because let's say it was a little bit different. So I'm going to start with Luca and the war, the one we're talking about is about the last one obviously in Barcelona. So Luca first the best one and then opinions uh, about Barcelona. It's very difficult to 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 say that uh, a world champions was uh, was the best one because uh, for me it's uh, always a, a big emotion. Uh, maybe I can say that the the one that I remember as uh, the as the beautiful championship was uh, in Erd in 2018 because uh, uh, we stay in a in, in a little hotel and we I remember um, such a familiar uh, um, feeling feeling yes. So we, we live the, all, all the time uh, in the hotel. Um, obviously, the, the first week when, when we train, because where, when the race starts, <laughs> we, we, we saw the hotel all, only for three, four hours a day. But the, the, the other time, uh, the, the train week was uh, very good because we live uh, the, 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 the experience. Um, very, very like in a family, uh, far from the city, 
uh, I, I have uh, the, these. Uh, I remember the, uh, those championship uh, like uh, the the best, but but all the championship was the, was the best. And uh, for the Barcelona, well. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you can uh, talk freely. <laughs> uh, it was uh, uh, challenging. It was challenging. Yes, uh, probably the best, the best word, <laughs> because uh, um, the 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 first uh, worst thing was the um, the uh, in Italy we say aspettativa, because yes. we the expectations. We, Expectation because we leave this uh, like the uh, an event that uh, will be great the the great uh, ever uh, event than ever and we we arrive <laughs> at the track. <laughs> It was uh, noisy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the track was uh, was very challenging because every day it is different. And uh, to make an uh, athlete uh, to be <laughs> to be focused, it, it was a, a very very challenge. Uh, it was really hot. Uh, there was not water. The, the, there was uh, there were very a lot of problems. But uh, we can save <laughs> the, the experience because. Uh, Uh, we, we try to live uh, always at the best and uh, like I said before uh, Massimiliano said uh, we can do it, we can do it <laughs> yeah, and, and we, we won, we won the, the World Roller Games so uh, it was always a, a good emotion but really, really you could do it <laughs> Uh, yes, we can yes, do it. Uh, the traffic. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I remember. <laughs> uh, everything was uh, really difficult because uh, uh, also a simple thing uh, such as to do to going from the hotel to to the track. It was really challenging because we we want to to make athlete to have their sleep. Uh, they they time to to prepare to the race. But uh, those times were really, really greater because uh, the, this, this uh, little bit uh, trip from the hotel to the track was very hard. So okay. I fully I understand. Stopped, no, I let me tell you from that, about Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> from the outsider's perspective, from the outsider's yes. perspective. The first time I was I was in Barcelona, I didn't got to see the track because I was up at the, the place where all the boots were and all that stuff. But I remember being up there and, and I'm, I'm in a good position with Power Slide and with most of the brands that were there. And I remember Matthias showing me the footage. And when I first saw it, I said, this is amazing. Of course, I didn't know how the, how the track felt. No one told me about it people just show me the first images and the first images from an outsider is like the location is perfect it looks beautiful it's very appealing and then a second point which is again nothing to do which is actually horrible for performance is the 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 track was so so loud that was somehow for skaters horrible super slippery and all that but at the same time being loud Again, from the outsider's perspective, someone that was walking by, it was impossible not to stop and look at it. Yeah. So as a way to grow the sport, not from the top performance, but to get some people to stop and look at it was for sure a success, but might have been the only one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pass the exact same question to Michelle. Michelle, the best world championship that, you've been, that you had with a Italian team oh. and uh, how did you deal with your with your skaters in Barcelona? Yes, this is uh, um, a beautiful question because uh, I am uh, too young in my federation. I am a physical uh, um, preparator uh, only from uh, 
one year, a few months, a few months. And so I have seen uh, only, um, I have done only some uh, some training with uh, with Italian athletes. When uh, I, I have seen uh, uh, Barcelona and uh, Pamplona European Championship, I have uh, um, I am the trainer of one of the athletes of national team. But uh, at the moment, uh, I was not uh, uh, the Italian. Uh, Physical preparation. Okay, so, so it's it's more me, recent. It's a is a, a, a world uh, to discover uh, about competition, um, but uh, now my job and my my emotion are for the for for growing up uh, the skill of the athletes. Okay. <laughs> future. Okay, yes. so you are more recent. You're focusing on the future, which is good. Now let's go to Georgia. Georgia, short track, speed skater in Barcelona. <laughs> uh, in Barcelona, uh, we we try. I think the worst uh, worst situation uh, ever possible. And uh, I think the the wrong things that they do is uh, think that uh, to Im to the imagine of the. Um, of the um, the competition and not uh, to the to do the performance and uh, we arrive there and uh, we think that uh, all the sacrifice of uh, one year and the work uh, is uh, is uh, it's uh, not uh, not useful because uh, and also for the motivation is not a good uh, it's, uh, it's uh, it wasn't a good thing and uh, so I think this is uh, the worst thing they have wrong in the championship. But at the same time, uh, last year, we, uh, with the team, with the group, we stare a good, uh, a good feeling because in the difficult moment, uh, we spend time together and we help, uh, uh, we help with us. One question still related to the same. Do you still think the people that won in Barcelona were the best skaters or you think the best skaters were affected by the, the whole situation and they didn't become, they weren't able uh, to do the good results? I don't know. I think uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a problem. Uh, the problem was with uh, with the track and uh, the results is uh, because and uh, the results don't arrive because uh, uh, you have also the mind uh, focused on the problem and uh, you everyone was in the same situation but uh, uh, you have to, to be able to adapt the situation to the situation and this is not very easy for everyone. I have to say that I agree with you. The best skater is the one that adapts the best. So in my opinion, it's the one, the best is the one that won there because he was the best in those conditions, no matter what. Um, Niero, Daniel, Yo. what was the best world championship where you have been? And what are your opinions about the last world championships? Yeah, I agree with the, with the Luca. Uh, for me, my, my best award championship was in Herde. The, the schedule uh, of the races were good and uh, we were lucky with the weather. Uh, the hotel was fantastic, the food was great. Uh, the track was good, the road, uh, yeah, that, that was also fine. And uh, I took also my best result uh, the world championship in Herde I, because I did four medals. So that was also my best uh, world championship in uh, talking about results. And of course, the, the worst one was the, the last one. Um, at the beginning, you know, you, you never try the track, so you are, about, you are curious, but you never think uh, that's going to be really bad. Um, then, you, then we start to try, and uh, the, the first feeling was, uh, <laughs> yeah was not really great. Uh, my mind was compromised for sure. Uh, but then I said, okay, we are uh, all in the same uh, ship. So let's try to adapt a bit and uh, let's try to roll more. 
to try to do, to do some more laps and not only focus about uh, the first impression. So then uh, in the, we, 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 I think we arrived in Barcelona one week before and uh, in the days before the, the World Championship, uh, I think I, I adapted really good. I was feeling good. Uh, the time were good and the track was fine at the end. I think uh, it w I was not slippering or uh, I was pushing. I, I could keep skating uh, also really low without problem. And then uh, the day of the of the race, or I think the, the night before, uh, it rains. It rains in Barcelona, and uh, I think it rains also a bit of uh, sand. And from that point uh, on, then it was uh, yeah, that was uh, crazy. Uh, I I could not push. I could I could not do anything uh, on track. It was really really slippery and really uh, hard to. Um, to skate on, but yeah, like what, what Georgia said is is true. I think uh, still who won, uh, they were the best at the moment, and uh, maybe they took the situation better uh, better than the others, and uh, so th that's it. But for sure, uh, for for all the skaters, also for who won, uh, it was uh, it was hard and. Uh, it was not an easy, easy uh, world championship because you you know you you train a lot and you do a lot of sacrifice, uh, diet and food and all this kind of stuff and then you you arrive there and uh, the track is like that and you know you start to be a, a little bit mad. You say, hey, what, what what's going on here and why and uh, so that was not a good uh, good okay. championship for me. Sure, the worst one. Okay, it makes sense. <laughs> now, I still have another question for you, Daniel. It comes again yep. from Marco Lira, and he is asking: In what team do you feel the most integrated? Is it Power Slide or Bond? Obviously, there is one team that you related nowadays, but there might be for sure one team that you you I, felt I, more integrated, I, no matter what. Good uh, with Bond, but um, when I was with Powerside, uh, was my first year senior, and um, but we have also to see this point of view. Um, I think Powerside is really professional uh, in everything. I mean, travels and uh, team suit and uh, brand and everything is fine. Uh, I think it was just uh, uh, you know I was first year senior. I want to. To try to, um, to race by myself to 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 see to to show to the other what I can do no on senior and uh, but at at the moment I was in a team with uh, Bart, Ewen, Peter, uh, Livio, Felix, me and Timothy and so we were just too much and uh, of course I was the youngest so I, I had to work for. For the guys, and uh, so that's why I moved uh, to to Bond, and uh, I decided to move to Bond so I could uh, I could skate uh, more for my results and uh, to see what was my my level against uh, the guys, the biggest guys. So that was the. Uh, it does make sense. I feel really good with Bond. Um, I think it's a. It's a we have a good relationship also with Yogo and the other guys. Uh, it's more, uh, it's more easy, let's say, like that. And the product? And the product, the product is also fine. I, I really like uh, Red Magic. Um, I always like to, to skate with the uh, NPC. So, also when I was with the uh, with powers, I struggled a little bit with the uh, with the wheels. But yeah, that was not the the main problem. Uh, the main problem was that I, I wanted to, to race for uh, for the results, not for uh, for some other guys, and um, that, that was okay. uh, the point. It does make sense what you mean. Of course, you you want to get somewhere, and while you're working to someone, you yeah, don't you have are. That uh, I'm gonna. I'm still gonna make another question related to these teams, and now to Georgia because Georgia has been on power slide for long enough. Georgia, how is it? To be on power slide nowadays 
but without Scott anymore? How is it to work with Pascal nowadays? Is it different? Yeah, yes, they are completely different. Uh, uh, Pascal is a very, uh, it's very present uh, and uh, uh, but I don't know him very well because uh, this year we don't do any any race together and so I don't know mm -hmm. very well. I know him only on social and uh, he is very present and so I think they are different to different people and I miss Scott but uh, uh, also Pascal is very good uh, as a um, and I, yes <laughs> yeah they, they, they have different sorry that we're going in that way but one used to develop product and also manage the team the other one is just focus on the team and I'm pretty sure that that gives the attention that the skaters want yeah. um, let's move away from the from the products and the and the teams that you guys skate outside of Italy let's talk about Italy again and I'm gonna go to to Luca and I'm gonna make a question to Luca which is Luca where do you see speed skating in Italy in five years from now oh <laughs> it's a, a great question well um in five years would be 2025 uh to to arrive to 2025 we have uh, another two world roller games and probably we have uh, a world uh, championship a world uh, championship in italy so uh we we focus um, to these uh targets and the speed skating uh, will change uh, but um, we have to wait the, the the end of the pandemic to <laughs> <laughs> because uh, some of the change that I imagine for the speed skating are uh, related to the pandemic because uh, in the pandemic period we we listen to uh, ma many ideas to to return to races uh, and so uh, can I you share we... some of it? can you share some of those can you share oh, some of those ideas oh some ideas like ma but uh, uh, ideas like uh, only singular races or uh, uh, to to return to the race, we we can do only speed races like uh, 100 meters or a lap uh, with two two guys that are uh, at the opposite side of the track uh, because there is the problem of the the touching. So the I don't know if there uh, there will be some changing related to this situation because i hope that uh, we return <laughs> to the normal life uh, as soon as possible but uh, we don't know exactly so we have to wait the the end of the pandemic and uh, maybe we uh, we will talk about some changes uh, in the speed skating for now, uh, we stay focused to the this uh, target that I I think there are they are uh, the the most important target for the for our activity. Okay, I'm I'm gonna need to go straight to Daniel again after what you just said because I'm gonna make the exact same question to all of you it's, and also to Daniel. Where does he see skating from now? But I need to ask him. If skating goes, if speed skating goes only the speed skating way or the singular races, what are you going to do? How is it going to be in five years? I don't know. Uh, yeah, like Lucas said, we have to, to, to see what's, what's going on. Let's see if uh, there is another pandemic virus. Maybe we cannot skate anymore. <laughs> but I think... Um, I'm a bit more used to, to skate uh, if we are going to skate on singular. Uh, I have some uh, experience uh, from ice. 
is not fun. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's also, uh, how do you say, in a, on the points race or elimination race, there are a lot of, um, um, yeah, you can be the strongest, but uh, if you are going to race a bed or if someone push you or grab you, then you can still lose. If you go in a singular way, uh, you are just you and, and the time. So it's a completely different race. And it's not going to be fun, I think, to, to watch. So uh, I hope it's going to stay like that. It's not tactical. Normally, <laughs> line skating. <laughs> That's good. So the thing is, I was actually going to touch about the ice during this these show that we're doing, doing this interview but the conversations ended up shifting in a different way but this is only season one so we might need to have you guys again and we might need to talk about ice on the next time which is going to be good now to georgia georgia five years from now what is it going to be uh, what, do, what are you going to be doing related to skating how is inline skating speed skating going to be in italy and if the whole thing goes into mainly speed skating, main, mainly short distance speed skating, are you happy with that? Uh, I think that in uh, we, uh, with Matthew, we, we are working in the right direction with uh, the group and, and also with uh, the young uh, young athletes. So in the five years, I think we in Italy we will have uh, a good group uh, of uh, young athletes, and uh, I hope uh, that we can complete compete uh, against uh, Colombia. And uh, yes, for the moment we we have to think to going uh, go, to go up uh, from pandemic, and uh, I hope that uh, the race uh, uh, are the same with the uh, contact that, that is uh, the the thing that uh, mm, different different from the ice skate and i think is the the thing is uh, it's beautiful than the ice skate and um, for the short distance for me i don't like for example the uh, the 100 um, in um, meters so, because uh, they they think that it's similar to the uh, to the athletic, but it's uh, it's not the same because uh, I think the most beautiful thing of the uh, speed skating is, is uh, the contact. Contact. So I prefer the race uh, where uh, where is possible race against someone, and uh, in the one one hundred is not possible. It's been spoken in this show a couple of times before, but apparently what's been happening with shorter distances and all that, it's also for the reduced time of the, the whole thing to create a more appealing, a more visual, a more interesting for all the public. But I have to agree with you, watching a 500 meter race where everyone is, everything is moving so fast, people skating so fast, so close, it's, it's super, super exciting to see, such as it is for me, a marathon. Like the beginning and the end of the marathon. I love doing marathons, and, but it's me because I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. What I like the most is obviously never the end because I suffer a lot in a marathon, but the beginning is awesome. I just love to, to smile to people. It's awesome, especially last year in, in, in Berlin with all the race, with all the rain. It was funny. Not the best, but funny. Uh, to Michelle, Michelle, five years from now, because you knew, but you're not, you're here to stay, right? Yes, uh, I only must walk. Uh, <laughs> and so, <laughs> <I'll wait. laughs> yes, uh, always work. And so, uh, my 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 world uh, is uh, to build. Is to build uh, uh, for the athletes, for my athletes, for uh, uh, Italian national team speed skating athletes. Um, for example, I must uh, to give uh, to my athlete. Uh, several instruments uh, we can um, talk about uh, strength we can we can talk about force but uh, also about uh, for example maximum uh, oxygen consumption uh, because uh, the modern athlete is uh, um, 
complete athlete. And so um, it's very important for me uh, to work uh, with uh, the senior. Eh? In, this, in this case, uh, we have Georgia and Daniel. Uh, they are senior, but they are uh, too young. 22, 23 years old for the modern sport, for the modern physical is uh, too young. And uh, in these five years, I want to be able to give them the possibility of uh, build several coordination skill. Okay, because uh, it's important to have uh, a maximum performance. I want to give to all of them a high level of performance with the minimum uh, possibility of injuries. This is my goal. Yes, that's for someone watching this, if they don't know exactly which most of the people are related to skating, but if there's any beginner or anything that doesn't understand the main difference between the coach and the, the physical preparator, the physical preparator is the person that is going to put the person on the cherry spot for the coach yes. to be exactly. for the coach to feel safe to do his job. Basically, Michelle is the person that it's make sure that the athlete has all the muscles worked in a certain mm -hmm. way that the injuries won't happen, that they're going to be in top performance in certain time of the year so that the coach can push them in a certain way without being scared of injuries and knowing that they are yes. the best that they could be yeah. for those championships. Right? I agree. It's totally okay. Agree. <laughs> we have one last question that I didn't want to do because we need to make a second, a second one with you guys because there's a lot to speak. But Marco Lira is asking something to Daniel. Daniel, we're not going to talk a lot about uh, ice skating, but I want to know, is it the aim, the Olympics? You want to be an Olympian? Is that is that the reason why I started ice skating? It's the, it's the main reason uh, why I start. Um, I start, uh, I think, four years ago, ice. And um, yes, uh, I, I say I saw myself on inline skating and uh, I saw already uh, some inline uh, they were doing good on ice so i said yeah at the end of inline of the inline career you can be world champion but that's it and um, i'm not the guy i think that want to win 10 times uh, the world champion uh, or the world title uh, only one is enough for me at the moment and uh, and then my 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 goal is moving to ice and i want to be uh, to be good enough at uh, at World Cup and uh, at uh, Olympic, that's that's my goal. That's why I start ice. If not, I was not uh, even starting ice. Yeah, it seems like it's a, it seems like it's a common thinking nowadays because I know that a lot of people was really expecting uh, inline speed skating to be in the Olympics, but after yeah. what happened in the last uh, Junior Olympics or that it didn't went that well for speed skating a lot of people actually somehow lost a little bit of hope so they see in highs the it's, uh, it's, possibility to... I, think, uh, I think it's 10 years already that i hear uh, the same story and if you speak with uh, some older than me uh, they told me the same i mean uh, the same uh, they said, yeah we are gonna go to olympic and we are gonna enter now and, and then they move other four years and other four years and I'm already 23 and I'm going for 24 and I don't think uh, inline is gonna enter Olympic uh, soon uh, so maybe it's gonna enter in the future I don't know I hope I hope I, I wish uh, the best of uh, on inline skating but I can't I can't wait for for that moment so I need to, to take my chance of on ice why do you think my question is in five years and not in four? <laughs> we want to know if inline skating is going to be in the Olympics in five years because it's not in 20 anymore. It should be in 2021. But let's be honest here. No one knows what's happening with the world. We all know that this pandemic is changing everyone's lives forever. It doesn't matter if you are in Italy, if you are in Portugal, if you are in China, if you are in the USA. This is changing everyone's lives forever, including the skaters' lives. So it was very interesting. It was awesome to have you guys in this show. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much 
as I did. It's always interesting to talk with different people about something that it's our passions. Obviously, some of us have different goals, but in the end, we all do it for the same. I keep saying the same. We all do it because it's fun. And the day that we stop thinking about how fun it is, that's the day it's actually very hard to do it. And that's when it becomes a lot harder for coaches and physical preparators to keep our skaters motivated and for the skaters to put the skates on. So thank you guys so, so much for this. If you want to say any last words, you're more than welcome. And I'm going to let you say any last words that you... <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to tell one. Otherwise, it's going to be hard. I'm going to start with Georgia. Ladies first, sorry. <laughs> Beautiful one, the beautiful one. <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, I'm grateful to be here. Thanks to everyone. You're welcome. Come on, now the second most beautiful, Michelle. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> no, well, you, you, you all are the second most beautiful. You all are, you all are the second most beautiful. You're just one yeah. of the second most beautiful, but you can start. <laughs> I want to thank uh, to, to all of you uh, because uh, it's um, a, a pleasure for me to to can uh, to try to speak because it's not uh, to uh, it's not easy to uh, to give uh, technical information in my job uh, in uh, in a, another language language and uh, so i want to say thanks uh, to all of you for the attention and uh, to my colleague luca and this beautiful athlete and georgia and daniel and uh, to you wow <laughs> conductor <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, thank you. I understand what you're saying. Basically, talking about technical terms in such a specific thing as skating and as coaching, it's not the easiest one. So thank you, thank you very much for trying. It's not for everyone to have the, the guts to come here and speak about it because it's not easy. It's for some of us, it's something that we've been doing our whole lives and exposing in a different language is not easy. So thank you. Uh, Daniel. Any last okay. words? Thank you, Ricardo, for let us uh, hear uh, speaking about uh, what we love, what we what we do. So sorry for uh, the the first part. Uh, my computer awesome. and wife not working. So I hope uh, the people that watch enjoyed a lot, and uh, maybe we can do another one uh, in in the future. We. We will find ways, but it, you know what? It's it, this is part of what we do. We're not in a studio. We're doing these the modern way, let's call it, and the modern way. And what we all do, it's adapting to realities. That's what you do in the races. That's what the coaches do with real life. That you want to do in Barcelona, and that's for us doing this, which is not just me. It's a whole team of people. People might not know, but there's three other people watching this right now in the background. This is actually more of their work than me. I'm just the host. I'm just here talking to you guys, but this is all their job. So thank you for adapting. Luca, well, any last words? Uh, I want to thank You're you. still the second most beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I want to thank you, Guy, because uh, it was uh, a really good time spent, spent to talking about uh, our passion in light speed skating i want to thank you and the other uh, people that are uh, uh, on the yeah. backstage okay so i want to thank you the national federation and uh, obviously georgia daniel and michele that are uh, here with me and uh, but uh, we'll see we will see in a, another episode maybe episode 35 <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> you know, this year, this year we've been doing this with with national teams, but we don't know. Maybe on the season two we're gonna actually do team power slide, team bond. We don't know. We don't really know. What we know is that we love what we are doing, and we want to unite people. The the whole goal with this show is to get people together and talk about speed skating. It would be amazing that we could always do it in a language that everyone can understand, but it's hard because we're trying to do something worldwide. The last episode was in Spanish. This one was with me, a Portuguese, speaking English with you, Italians. So we're always going to 
face some difficulties, but this is normal, this is life, and we love it, that's why we all skate. So with that being said, I hope that everyone enjoyed this show, this out of the box episode three at home. If you did enjoy this, if you didn't subscribe to the channel, make sure to subscribe to this channel, which is 100% speed skating related. When there's world championships, European championships, you'll be able to see live streams, you'll be able to see the races and who knows what the future is going to bring to this channel. So if you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe to these. Uh, if you enjoyed any of these skaters that we had here and the coaches, I'm pretty sure they're active on their social media. Or if you see them in a world championship, in a European championship, go talk to them. Go tell them that you enjoyed this. I'm pretty sure they're going to appreciate it. And I guess like all the Italians would say, ciao. Ciao. <laughs> ciao. ciao.